Hi, I'm Chaitanya Leela and I work as a psychotherapist, hypnotherapist, trauma specialist in the UK. I'm also the head of a university's mental health service and I'm currently studying a PhD in psychology. Now I'm explaining that to you because I believe I have some authority in the area of mental health and hence the reason why I'm talking about this. So the major portion of this video was actually filmed before the Guardian article came out about Jay Shetty and this part um, is after. As a mental health professional in this area for over a decade, having uh, recruited different therapists and mental health practitioners, having trained and studied for years, um, having read many, many different sources on psychological material, I, I know the hard work that it takes to um, work in this area. I know in my clinical practice, you know, the demand, the, the complexities of working with different psychological issues, diagnosed and undiagnosed. And I, I became increasingly concerned because there are a lot of vulnerable people that need support. And a lot of these individuals will reach out to, um, you know, who they come across online. And hence, I found this uh, to be very concerning that there was there were a lot of inaccuracies that were being presented. So I'm sharing this for the purpose of public safety. I do think that this information really needs to be looked at even in more detail than, than what I'm doing myself because people need to be safeguarded from misinformation and inaccuracies around mental health support. Now, those who struggle with mental health difficulties can be extremely vulnerable at times. And actually, as human beings, we are vulnerable. At any point, we may go through a, a, a terrible tragedy in life and struggle immensely psychologically. We're gonna need some support, we're gonna need some help. And so it's so important that there's correct information out there about mental health support, that the people that are providing this support are um, qualified, are uh, effective in their work, are trained. Now, I'm not saying that all secular mental health services are perfect. Um, and that there's no flaws in them. But what I am saying is that there are certain schools and certain training pathways that are very, very rigorous. It takes years and hours of training, dedication, personal, in-depth growth and transformation so that somebody can be as professional, as well-informed and safe to work with. It was made quite clear in the Guardian article that the credentials of this person is not uh, accurate and what's being presented in the school has not been totally accurate either. So I will be covering, covering some other things that weren't in the article and uh, my opinions here in this video are my opinions based off of um, my insight and professional perspectives. So let me just make clear what I'm not doing. I'm not stating that Jay hasn't helped millions of people. I do think he has helped millions of people. However, there is a huge difference between posting positive messages online and studying deeply a subject and teaching that subject to others to have them be qualified enough to go out in the world and work one-on-one -on -one with individuals that are potentially vulnerable. I was actually born and brought up in the ISCOM community and Jay came at some point uh, in his teenage years and yes there was a relationship but I'm not coming from that angle purely coming from the perspective of the mental health profession and some of my community members that support him have called me envious and they've said various different things I do expect to be completely smeared um, I do expect to be hated um, however to me this is a public interest matter, it's a public safety matter in the area of mental health. And I find it interesting that these people, some of them life coaches themselves, um, assume things about people without actually seeing the facts in front of them or actually having a conversation. It's quite a big claim to make that you know somebody's deep seated heartfelt intentions. The other principle that I really believe in is honesty and truthfulness. According to the Vedic scriptures, truthfulness is the last limb in this day and age and we must protect it. So for me, I my intention here is to be honest. All that I request and all that I ask for from my community members is to please, can we uphold truthfulness? Can we uphold integrity and honesty to protect our society and to protect our community members? Jay Shetty has claimed that he did behavioral science at Cass University 
And for the entire time that he's developed his certification program in coaching, he has claimed this online. He has recently, however, changed this to management science. Now that is the truth. Uh, I was with him actually when he was at university. He did business and management science. Um, and so the fact that he did behavioral science has been a misrepresentation of his background and qualifications. This is problematic because he developed a coaching school that is a, an accredited coaching school via the Oso Association for Coaching. Now that coaching uh, association, just like every other regulatory body has a code of conduct, ethical guidelines and things like that, that members should be adhering to. And one of those is integrity. And it states here that members will be suitably qualified to work with their chosen client group and honestly represent them, their relevant experience, professional qualifications, memberships and certifications, accreditations to clients, sponsors, stakeholders and fellow practitioners. It also says that members will ensure that no false or misleading claims are made or implied about their professional competence, qualifications or accreditation in any published promotional material or otherwise. Members will attribute ownership of work, ideas or materials of others to originators and not claim it as their own. So we can see here that the code of conduct within the Association for Coaching that Jay Shetty's school is accredited and associated with is stating that one should not misrepresent their qualifications in any published material and they should be honest with everyone who they work with um, about their qualifications and their credentials. However, the very person who has created this, the school that is accredited with, with the Association for Coaching has not done so himself. Now, I have checked whether Jay is actually a certified coach. I was wondering, well, maybe he's done some other coaching qualification, but I can't see this online. Now, it's just not something that's been put online if he does have it. Um, and if he doesn't have it, then that raises other questions as to his qualifications and his ability to teach students into his life coaching school. Uh, ordinarily, it would. I have checked his website, Wikipedia. I've checked his LinkedIn and his coaching school websites. And nowhere does it state that Jay Shetty has done a coaching qualification himself uh, and is an accredited coach himself. The only thing that is mentioned about his own credentials in as to why he has created his certification school has been his own claims of being in India and having his own uh, meditation experiments and uh, his realizations that's come from that. Now, this raises a few questions for me. One is, um, these are his claims. Uh, is there anybody who is uh, a non-biased witness that can, can verify these claims? The second thing is, what exactly you know has he produced uh, from his realizations? Because the ABCs that he has created out of this claim of him being in India, um, a lot of them are um, ideas that have been generated from elsewhere, like being aware, uh, mindfulness, uh, smart goals, uh, and those things. So. Um, it would be really great to really understand exactly what life coaching methods did he produce throughout his sort of uh, monk uh, time in India. Then it raised a question to me, which is, well, he hasn't done anything in coaching, mental health, no qualifications. Uh, and he hasn't done life coaching, but maybe he doesn't actually do life coaching, or maybe he doesn't isn't directly involved in the teaching or the life coaching itself, and he's just the CEO of a company and his own business. However, this is not true. Question seven: Will I be learning the exact coaching strategy and tools used by Jay Shetty with his coaching clients? The answer is yes. As a Jay Shetty coach, you'll be learning the exact same strategies I use with my clients in my coaching practice. On his coaching sites, he does actually teach other students. He claims to be teaching 11 modules out of the total modules. Like I said, we've got someone who doesn't have the qualifications that he claimed. He misrepresented his degree 
and then he hasn't done or hasn't shown online that he has done life coaching himself, meaning trained in life coaching. He has his own claims that he developed some sort of methodology from his time in India and has not been uh, adhering to the codes of conduct that his very own school must adhere to to be a member of. So the second part of this video is looking at some of the things that Jay has said on his coaching school's website. The first thing he talks about is the definition of a therapist. A therapist, like a life coach, wants to help their clients move forward. Their objectives and approaches are very different though. The foundation of therapy is based on the medical model. As such, a therapist diagnose and cure a type of dysfunction, such as a therapist identifying schizophrenia or a personality disorder, and help the person recover their normal functions by reducing the symptoms. Therefore, a therapist helps a patient return to their cognitive and emotional baseline or the way they used to feel, think and act. Okay, he refers to a therapist uh, being based on the medical model and working with diagnoses. He states that the foundation of therapy is based on the medical model. He states that therapists uh, identify, diagnose and cure types of dysfunction, such as a therapist will identify disorders like schizophrenia and personality disorders and help them go back to normal functioning. He also uses the word patient instead of client. We have to remember that this person is teaching students to become life coaches, to work with potentially vulnerable individuals. This information, his definition of a therapist is completely incorrect. It's wrong. It's false. We as therapists do not cure mental health issues. We do not diagnose mental health issues. Um, we can sometimes identify possibilities of uh, mental health diagnoses, but we do not diagnose and we do not cure, okay? I think what Jay is, th is actually talking about is a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist is based on the medical model. That's the other thing that he's wrong about. A majority of therapists do not work based on the medical model. Psychiatrists, however, do. Psychiatrists work on the medical model. They're able to um, identify, diagnose, and mental health disorders. They will use the DSM to provide diagnoses and they'll provide medication and they will often and majority of the times they will refer patients, their patients, to um, therapy. Okay and I'll describe what therapy really is in a moment. So he's got that completely incorrect. Therapists uh, do not uh, are not based on the medical model although they usually are aware of the medical model but there is a variety of therapies out there from cognitive behavioural therapy, uh, which I'll talk about later, um, psychodynamic, I'm an integrative psychotherapist, um, existentialism, there's uh, transactional, there's lots of different types of therapies. It's a bit of a minefield, to be honest. However, his definition here is completely incorrect and misleading. Now, this is somebody, like I said, is teaching students and those students are also going to have misinformation and they are then also going to likely inform their clients and those clients are likely going to be misinformed about what therapists do. This can become a potential problem because people may encounter more difficult psychological issues that they might require a different professional for. They might need to see a psychiatrist, they might need to see a therapist. However, with these definitions that Jay is providing, they may not seek out that support thinking that, well, my issues aren't as severe as schizophrenia, <laughs> my issues aren't a, a mental health diagnosis, so I won't go and see a therapist. Now that could actually harm the individual because they're not accessing the right support when they should be. And also furthermore, they might stay with the coach, right? Thinking that, well, you know, under these definitions, yeah, I do need to continue seeing a coach and not a therapist and not a psychiatrist or, you know, any other form of help that might help them. And they'll stay with that coach and perhaps that coach isn't the most suitable person for them. The other thing is, is that the words schizophrenia and personality distor disorders are highly stigmatizing. They are probably the two of the most um, extreme and most challenging, uh, most, most difficult mental states to work with in mental health and the use of these words I think are problematic in my opinion because like I said these two diagnoses are very extreme it's also more rare 
to have them. So to associate those two diagnoses with the work that therapists do is very, very misleading, okay? Because these two disorders are not the only two disorders that therapists work with. Um, also, the association with therapists and these and this information that Jay's providing, again, could potentially further and stigmatize people with those issues because people will avoid wanting to see a therapist because if they see a therapist and therapists are associated with schizophrenia and, and personality disorders and therefore this will restrict people in terms of accessing mental health support. Now we have a huge issue, especially in the black and ethnic minority uh, community of under utilization of mental health services. Okay, so this is a big problem. Black and Asian ethnic minority individuals uh, suffer in silence a lot and there is a huge issue with stigmatization of mental health in general. Therapist is a common term that's thrown about. Um, it's becoming more and more popular. But if this information associates therapists with the most extreme disorders, it could give an even more negative connotation for certain groups um, on accessing therapeutic support. Again, you know, compounding um, their reasons to avoid seeking support. Comparing that to what coaches do under Jay's definition makes it more um, likely that individuals will go to a coach rather than a therapist. I'll read what he says here about coaching. He says he compares coaching with therapy and he states that coaches enable and promote change instead of curing. This is not correct. This is not correct. Therapists do not cure. I can guarantee you that every therapist, every psychologist and every psychiatrist, okay, will state that they do not provide a cure for mental health issues. My opinion here is that if Jay really did know about mental health, if he really knew about well-being, then he would not have said what he said. He wouldn't have got the definition of therapist wrong. He wouldn't have compared coaching to therapy in this way. And he wouldn't have mentioned anything about cure. Now, psychiatrists can provide medication, which can help mood. Therapists massively work with change with clients. They use years of training. It takes about uh, four years to train as a psychotherapist, okay, not just a few uh, hundred hours or so. They're expected every year to, to do CPD to improve their skills and in this way they work with tools in order to enable change and that does require uh, the person that they're working with to engage in that change and to evolve as a person and to change their state of mind from something that is problematic for them to something that is, you know, their desired end, end result really. But none of us, none of us provide a cure and none of us believe to, to provide a cure. So this is completely mis misleading. As I said before, this really seems like it's promoting coaching versus going to therapy for the everyday person. Schizophrenia and personality disorders are more on the extreme side of mental health. So when you have that on the at one end of the mental health spectrum and you've got everything below it, um, it really seems like everything below serious diagnosed mental health conditions should be with a coach. Um, and this is just in, in, in a complete inaccuracy and a misinformation of the mental health industry. This could produce harm in the future. If you were to, or anyone, was to ever experience a complete severe mental health crisis, I'm saying just a crisis that you require more help for, um, you will have the wrong information and you may not necessarily go to a therapist or you might have your own presumptions about what they provide. And I've experienced this. In my clinical practice, I've experienced people going to all sorts of professionals and feeling really, really um, hurt and, and disheartened. And people shut themselves off from accessing mental health support when they have had a bad experience. And that then causes further problems for them because they don't reach out for support. So this is why I believe that this is a really serious issue. It's a, it's a very serious issue that I'm I'm you know, I, f I find it so important to talk about. The other inaccuracy is that he mentions the use of the word patient when referring to therapists. Now, that's not true as well. As a therapist, I refer to the people that I work with as clients. I don't refer to them as patients, and most therapists don't either. 
psychiatrists do because they they are doctors right and they might also be detecting other physical symptoms um, and therefore they will refer people to patients but therapists do not we don't refer to people as patients and also through my phd research i've read about how the different words impact the um, user experience like when we are called a patient we it seems like we are passive receivers of the help and that can be seen right with with mental health patients when they access um, pharmaceutical drugs by their psychiatrists that they are just passive receivers and client sounds like i'm paying for a service that i'm responsible to and so the the use of the language is very interesting that he's used the word patient when referring to therapists um, and clients when referring to coaches but again this is another inaccuracy Now, the other concern that I have is that following on from these definitions that he's uh, misunderstood and he's misrepresented, but then he goes on to talk about coaching. He goes on to talk about um, the cognitive cycle and how there are um, negative thoughts and behaviours and feelings that one can generate from a belief. Now, this sounds like he's using a coaching tool. It's not really quite clear. Um, he does refer to psychologists and cognitive behavioural experts, but what he hasn't made completely clear is that the model that he's talking about is actually from cognitive behavioural therapy. Every day you start to see the connection between your cognitive experiences, i.e. your thoughts, feelings and emotions, and your behaviour. This is known as the cognitive cycle, which shows how you respond to situations in the context of your core beliefs. Okay, it's not a model of his, but he doesn't reference this. And this is another issue of, of referencing that we see here. He hasn't referenced cognitive behavioural therapy. Aaron Beck, who was the founder of cognitive behavioural behavioral therapy in 1967. So CBT therapy has been around for, like I said, decades. <laughs> really important to reference the founders of these models. OK, and it's really important that they themselves reference where they got the knowledge and information from if they have. In conclusion, it's very important for those who would like to train in the area of psychology to find a robust training that doesn't make incorrect claims. I'm not saying that this course may not have helped individuals because there may be some skills and tools in there that that are helpful. I'm not saying that. All I'm simply saying is that there are some inaccuracies here and it's potentially dangerous for misinformation to go out in the area of mental health. It is unethical and dangerous to work as a medical profession without having the correct training and credentials. So why is it not the case in the area of mental health, well-being and life coaching and psychology? Because opening yourself up psychologically puts you in a very vulnerable position. Mental impressions from experiences can be lifelong. So you want to make sure that you're getting the support from a trustworthy person that has your best interest at heart.